Greetings all, welcome back to the channel. Today we are finally going to start looking at this Sony boombox here, the CFS 9000. I'm kind of excited to get started on this one because A, it's my very first Sony boombox. Yes, thank you, Mr. Commercial. I like Billy. I like Tony. But what I love is my first Tony. It won't be your last. It won't be your last. Well, that's not creepy. Anyway. Yeah, today we're going to look at this boombox. This isn't exactly the boombox I would have preferred to get from Sony. It's the FH7 I've been after for years and years and years. But I figured this would be sort of a nice consolation prize, since I can't get that one yet. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but FH7 prices are still ludicrous. It was always a, a really nice boombox back in the day, and it remains so now. In fact, I can tell you right now that uh, the original FH7 is probably one of the best boomboxes I've ever heard for sound quality. So, yeah. I'm hoping this gives us pretty much the same experience, but we'll see. It's kind of a small little guy. You can see how big my hand is compared to, to the boom box here. My hand is eight and a half inches long, so yeah, it's kind of a tiny little thing. But for some reason, it's tiny, but it's really heavy. Like, I can just barely get it off the, the table with one hand here. And I'm a big dude, so... Yeah. Quite a, a heavy unit. And uh, it's really not exactly what I would call a boombox, per se, because the handle is permanently attached, so... It's more like a mini component system, even though the components themselves don't come apart like they do on the FH7. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to find out what works and what doesn't work, and then we'll try and figure out a plan of attack on what it is I'm going to be doing with this, because I really would like this to be fully working. As you can see up here, it's got a seven band tuner up here, so. I would really love to get that working. And uh, I gotta caution you though, the seven band thing is kind of, I don't know if you would call it a, a misnomer or what, because uh, it appears to me what Sony has done is they've gone with the, the five separate shortwave bands there to avoid having to put in a fine tuning adjustment. So yeah, I've got another boombox that has shortwave capabilities, and that one has a fine-tuning knob. So that one's only got a two-band shortwave tuner. It's got AM, FM, and then two shortwave bands. But this one's got the seven bands, and it's just a way of uh, helping Sony get this thing together without having to do a fine-tuning knob. So. I don't know if the tuner actually works well or not. That's what we're here to find out. And uh, I think what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a look real quick at this bag of goodies that came with this unit. This came from a guy in, I think, Edmonton or Red Deer. I'm not exactly sure which one, but uh, it didn't come from far away, so that's why I bought it. This one did not have to come all the way from Japan for a change, which is real nice because I can't afford the ones in Japan right now, so... Maybe I will in the future again, but we'll see. And maybe I'll get this bag open. Yes, there we go. So... We've got a few things included with this unit. We've got the two original speaker cables, and this is just lamp cord, so... Nothing special there. We've got this power cord, which is always nice to get. 
And we've got an uh-oh bag. Came from bottom of tape deck. Yeah, let me see if I can get this up closer. Yeah, that looks like a little gear, and I bet I know what gear that's that's from. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that the tape deck does not work at all. Let's bring this forward real quick. And I wanna pop the tape deck open. Oh yeah, you see that? You see the way the tape head is? Like it's not even attached to anything down there. I can just move it with my finger. Yeah, that's where that gear came from. It's part of the flippy doodle head assembly. Without that gear, the head can't flip and this unit cannot play tapes. And I bet it goes even further than that. So yeah, it looks like I've jammed up the little flippy head now. Wonderful. There we go, I got it freed up. So yeah. Now a fair disclosure, I've looked into it be ahead of time because I did have to uh, check this out so I could leave feedback on the eBay listing. And I noticed this immediately. And I've gone looking and fortunately there is a replacement for that gear from one source. So I'm probably going to go ahead and do that, but before I do that, I need to take this mechanism out of the unit and we need to see if there are any other broken gears because one thing I've noticed these Sony machines really like to do is break gears. And if there's more than one broken gear, it's not worth, it's, or rather, it's likely not worth trying to get this little guy replaced. So yeah. There's no way we're going to be able to test the tape deck today. I might try and fire it up and see if we can get any action from the motors or from the reels just to know whether or not we've got any broken belts in there because I'm betting we do. I can already see there's this one belt down in there. That one at least appears to be in good shape. You can see it right there. That's an important belt actually. What it does is it runs the uh, the tape counter and it also runs this little sensor that tells the machine when the reels are turning. So if that belt isn't there, then nothing will play. And it does appear to be there, but I'm going to take a closer look at it and probably replace it anyway because yeah, like I said, I want this thing to be fully working. So, we've seen the front of the unit. Well, I guess we haven't really taken a look at the controls yet. This is an auto-reverse tape deck with soft touch controls here. We do have an autoplay here, an automatic music sensor, so we can find the next track properly, or easily, I should say. Got Dolby noise reduction down here. Got a three stage mode control like most auto reverse decks have. And we've got a timer here for record off and play. That's just so you can hook up a, a timer to the AC line input and have this immediately come on and play when the power gets applied to the unit. Up here to the middle, we've got a graphic equalizer, not a particularly good one. It's just a five band. We've got centers at 100 hertz, 400 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, and 12 kilohertz, which to be fair is plenty for a unit like this. Got just this three function selector here, tape, tuner, and CD or auxiliary. It's good that they thought ahead far enough to use the to do the auxiliary thing, and I have tested that input. We've got a little bit of a balance issue on that input for some reason. I was not able to get audio through both speakers at equal volumes on that. So we're gonna have to look at that probably. Now, we've already seen the 
tuner, that's all the way up at the top here. Short wave, medium wave, or AM and FM. So yeah, let's take a look at the back real quick. Okay, I immediately see we are going to need a new aerial. Usually what I like to do for these shortwave units is to try to find a way to get a longer aerial on these things because when it comes to shortwave, the longer the antenna you have, the better. On the other machine I mentioned that has shortwave, I actually took the, uh, the, uh, the stock antenna off and I installed a six foot long Radio Shack aftermarket antenna. And you could bring in some serious stations with that thing, let me tell you. I could pick up stations from all the way on the other side of the planet with that thing. That was so cool. Anyway, that might be a future project because that one does need some work, but right now we're dealing with this one. I like this here. When the set is not to be used for a long period of time or is to be operated extensively on AC house current, remove the batteries. That's to prevent corrosion. You would not believe how many people didn't do that back in the day, and as a result, their battery compartments were shot by the time future owners got to them. But this one, look at that. Absolutely perfect in there. So yeah, looks like we've got a voltage selector here for multiple input voltages. That's good. See if I can zoom in on this label here. There's your frequency ranges along with your power supply specifications. And yep, if you want to run this off battery, then you need 10 D cells, just like my big Panasonic portables. And I'll give you a closer look at this here, the voltage selector. As you can see, you can do 220, 240. And uh, what is it? 110, obviously. Can't quite make out this lower one, but... Oh, that's 125. Never mind. And down there, we've got a DC input, which is nice to have. And then there's your AC receptacle. So yeah, we've got some issues going on cosmetically in front too. I'll just turn this unit back around so you can see that. One of the reasons I was so excited to get this unit was because the use of Sony's APM speakers. That stands for Accurate Pistonic Movement, I believe if my brain's not playing tricks on me. Basically, Sony figured out that they could make drivers with these flat diaphragms come out with less distortion and better sound reproduction than normal cone drivers. But you might have noticed that there's a little bit of an issue with this woofer here. There looks to be a couple of pinholes in the diaphragm back in there, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take this woofer out and we're going to take a look to see if there's anything A that we need to do about that or B if we can just ignore it. And I'm betting we can just ignore it, but we'll see. I'm not really too concerned about that. So, what will we do now? Well, How's about we get power applied and get the speakers hooked up and see what works on this unit? Back in a second. Alright, power is applied and we are ready to get started testing this unit. I've had to switch over to my other iPhone to record this video because I've forgotten that I need my 13 Pro Max to, to run the, the audio for the little Bluetooth adapter so we can test the tuner. So yeah, I had to switch over to that. And the, the little Bluetooth thingamajigger is running right now, as you can see over there. So we are ready to go. But I think the first thing we're going to do is go over to the tape. Power on, of course. 
got a lot of crackling in the controls here I see we're going to have to clean. That's no problem, we can do that. But right now what I want to do is I want to see if we can get the tape to do anything at all. And I'm guessing we won't. So, the little switch for the for the uh, motor lockout is up top here, right about where my thumb is. So I'm going to just hold this down and we're going to try to play something. Okay, yeah, we've got movement from this reel. and But if you look at this belt here, it's not really moving what I would call evenly. So yes, that does need to be replaced. And it looks like Yes, it is fully engaging the mechanism. That's good. Now, what happens when we try to do reverse? Nothing. So, yeah, we have at least one good belt in there. I'm actually surprised. I wasn't able to get it to... to even do this much the first time I tested this. Uh, we may have at least one broken belt in there, so we'll find that out by and by. And I think, I must apologize, I don't think we're going to get into that speaker in this video after all. This is going on quite a bit longer than planned, so I think what I'll do is I'll just make the tape deck diagnosis and the speaker diagnosis a separate video. I kind of need the extra the extra videos anyway because I just don't have enough on hand to, to do projects with right now. So we've checked out the tape deck. I think there's hope for it, but uh, yeah, it just depends on whether or not I can get that little gear replaced. Because, uh, I don't know about you guys, but this thing is far too small for me to glue back together. If I try to glue this back together, or epoxy it back together, it's going to be married to the shaft it was on permanently. And I would rather be able to be able to take it back apart again if I need to. So, yeah, if I can't get the, the replacement gear... Yeah, I don't know. What I might do is order a couple of those gears, but uh, I don't know this vendor. I don't know how well they do with this kind of stuff, so we'll just have to see. Anyhow, we've tried that, so time to go over to the tuner. Okay, let's see if we can get the little modulator. It's there, but it's not in stereo. Hmm, and I don't see a monophon monophonic button here. So we may have some issues with the tuner as well. Like normally in this situation, I would expect there to be some issues with a mono stereo button, but there is none in this one, so at least none that I can see. So let's see if we can at least get audio through there. Maybe the indicator LED has failed. Yeah, right. All right, let's go with a little more Vaporwave. dirty. And 
I'm just listening here to see if it's in stereo. It does not sound like it's in stereo. Yeah, I think we've got an issue with the tuner here. Definitely an issue with the tuner. The control is dirty, I'm noticing. But that should not be causing it to have issues with the stereo detection. Now, if this tuner needs realigning, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do about that because I do not have the, the ability to, to align a tuner. That requires a bunch of specialized gear that I do not have. So let's go over to medium wave or AM. Okay, it's immediately pulling in something there. This actually has quite a decent AM tuner in it. And uh, we're not going to be able to do much with short weight because I can't get this broken aerial to, to come out, but maybe we'll get lucky and catch something here. Doubtful. Nope, nobody home. I keep coming back here hoping it's going to pop into stereo, but I don't think we're going to get that lucky with it. Anyhow, at the moment we're getting decent audio out of both speakers, same volume and everything, so that tells me that whatever's going on with the auxiliary input is specific only to that input, so we'll just have to see if we can figure out what's going on with that. So I've just shut off the Bluetooth modulator, and I think we're going to conclude this video here. In the next video, we'll get into this thing and we'll see exactly what needs to be done, hopefully. See you next time.